Hello and welcome to GMI, the Guitar and Music Institute podcast number 8. Today I'm going to be interviewing a very creative man. His name is Chris Prendergast from Canada. And Chris is the inventor of a new amplifier called Jamstack. You're going to learn all about it coming up. If you're listening to this on iTunes, come on over to www.guitarandmusicinstitute.com and there's loads more stuff on what Chris and his team are doing to tell you everything about Jamstack that will back up what we're talking about here today. And if you are on iTunes, please subscribe. But of course, there are many other places you can get this podcast. So, Chris, it's great to actually be talking with you. Thanks for having me on. It's a pleasure. So, Jamstack, why and how? Where, where did it all come from? Sure, yeah. I've, I've been a guitar player for a really long time, and my favorite thing to do was to play two backing tracks. So, this was starting off the story about four years ago, and I had a one of those light bulb moments where, I mean, I'm, I have an engineering background. I'm always a tinkerer and building things, and, um, and uh, I just kind of wanted, I was like, oh, I wish everything that I'm using right now could just be like in my guitar. I remember that thought specifically because right at the point I had like an interface and some software on my computer and I was playing music and playing along to it, which is the only, you can't really play the backing tracks in a normal amp because it can't handle both things at once. So, and then I, and I realized that, well, wait a minute. I mean, technically speaking, there's enough processing power on my phone to handle the software side. And I mean, there's a lot of extra space in the guitar here. Um, maybe I can do something. So the, actually the first iteration was not an amp. It was a custom guitar. So I drilled a hole in the guitar and put a bunch of the components into it and some wiring, 3D printed a little phone mount and had this cool little kind of travel guitar that you could play with and had effects and didn't need an amp. And, and it was great. But I didn't really know at the time much about business. I was just working as a teacher at the time. Um, showed a few people. They thought it was awesome. But just kind of let it die. And then... Now, going back just a year and a half ago, I had another brainwave. I was like, I was actually playing uh, through a Bluetooth speaker and realized what great little amp that it made. It was fantastic. I enjoyed it a lot. So then I thought, hmm, I could make an even better version. So I got another guitar, drilled another so, hole. So what happened to that original guitar? Are you, are you still using it, Chris, or is it now in the bin? Uh, so the original is actually I can show you. <laughs> it's right here. <laughs> so I don't I don't use it much. Um, you can uh, I know you guys you can't see it at home, but it's got controls on the front and a speaker kind of right in the center. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean it's all hacked to parts uh, to bits now, but I just kind of keep it around. And then uh, here's my new version, uh, which kind of is just drilled a hole in it and put a, like a little portable Bluetooth speaker. And it was just so simple and so cheap that I, and and so transformative. In, in how I was able to play, I knew that there was there was something there. And every person I showed it to was just like, that's the coolest thing you've ever seen. Well, to be honest, uh, rather than drilling holes in people's guitars, I think what you've come up with is a much better solution. I agree. And I'm, yes, I, I agree. So, and, and, yeah, I mean, there's another epiphany. This was a series. That's, the story is, is a series of epiphanies. It's not kind of like one kind of, oh, modular amp that attaches to. It was, um, yeah, it wasn't kind of like that, really. So... I saw uh, on Indiegogo, actually, uh, a project called the Fusion Guitar, which was essentially what I was describing, was a guitar that you could insert your iPhone in for the portable effects side. And, but it was really complex and super expensive. It was like 800 US, and it was just this big, huge speaker. And um, But they did really well. They raised like half a million dollars. So I was simultaneously validated. And like, oh, yes, it's not just me that wants this, um, but also kind of like, ah, I kind of missed the boat, like they're doing this already, and I, I could come up with a cheaper one. But you're right. Then the next epiphany happened. I was like, what if I could, people could play their favorite guitar that they love, that um, is, you know, the one that they want to play and have it modular and, and just attach it right on. And I, I started thinking, is that even possible? I didn't, I didn't know right away. It was, would it, could you create a compelling solution like that? How would it attach? You know, would, would it be too heavy? And, you know, where would you put the phone? And, and started uh, really anal analyzing the playing surface on the guitar. And, and then eventually, it just, I just bought like a whole ton of Bluetooth speakers and eventually made essentially what the Jamstack is right now. Um, and it was just an ugly, hacked up, you know, bunch of post-consumer parts. Um, but, it, but it worked. Like it was a kind of a proof of concept to me and to other people. So that was 
that's the birth of the idea. Right there. Chris, I think that whole idea about not having to get rid of your favorite guitar is and all the expense and all the rest of it. The fact that you can place the jam stack on many, many types of guitars. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I think it's I think it's I think it's the optimal solution period. I mean I'm obviously biased, but yeah. Yeah, well can you explain to the, the listeners how it works with the mobile phone? But bef- just before that, does it need batteries in itself? Yes, yes, it does. It does. It um it but not not um it's rechargeable though. So we've got a lithium ion battery in there. It's it's very very similar in structure to a Bluetooth speaker. So if you've ever had one of those portable premium Bluetooth speakers where usually it's a micro USB and that charges up and they last kind of forever and some of them sound incredible, um especially the more premium ones and that's kind of what we've gone for. So yeah, if you're trying to understand you know how heavy it is, what it sounds like, and how you charge it and all that kind of stuff, just think about um those pr- those premium you know three hundred dollar bluetooth speakers and it kind of that's kinda exactly what we just tapped into uh, and then some custom wiring and, and mounts and you know case and all that stuff that needed to, to make it work so when did you start thinking was it right at the beginning more or less as you perhaps alluded to earlier about the mobile phone because th- that's a really powerful aspect of this not only are you getting some great sounds and it's pretty loud the jam stack isn't it for its it time. is it's sh- yeah it's shockingly loud yeah yeah so so the the mobile phone but w- where did that come in in your thinking well this was really yeah, really early on initially like it was like so uh, there's all these great third party software there's like six or seven apps um that do amazing jobs at modeling amps and you're supposed to buy an adapter and use headphones um which is kind of a shame and and they they do a very 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 good job now you can plug you can sure plug that into an amp if you want to um but it's like why would you it's just not any more portable if i'm at home stuck to my amp i'm probably going to use my computer i guess so and that's but that's just me i'm sure some people do it but yeah it was very early on i was like look i've everything that i that i need is kind of in this teeny tiny little you know, device, everything can be on this guitar and not, and not, uh, change the way it feels. Um, I, oh, I wasn't sure if that happened, but when, when I made one and I was like, yep, this is, this is awesome. This is, you know, you can't feel it. It sounds awesome. It's super fun. It's ergonomic. There's, I'm like, I was started thinking, you know, there's no way that people aren't going to want this. Um, so yeah, let me explain I can, how it works, I guess. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. But I was just wondering how, how you managed to work out to, I mean, is it easy from an engineering point of view to hack into the phone and the software and to link that up to the the bluetooth uh, speaker aspect of it it is it's embarrassingly simple actually um like i said it's a transformative product in the way that it feels to experience it but this technology has been around for a while and it's really just signal management like just sending sound through a circuit and back so essentially modern smartphones have what's called a four pole connector which which is why you can like do volume controls on your headphones Mm -hmm. and it's also why you can talk and have a conversation and send sound out while also hearing the other person at the same time so sound can go in and out so though i mean that's been around for you know for a while now and uh, so essentially what happens is the clean sound comes out of your guitar uh we sent and we just send that straight into the phone and then uh, like all of these existing software they all work the same way they all just send it right and then it does its magic you know effects reverb whatever you want to do and then sends it back down that same cable and then uh and then we just plug that right into like what you would uh use this the aux in for your bluetooth speaker um and comes right out so it's all wired because bluetooth has a delay on it so it's still a bluetooth speaker if you want to just listen to music but when you're playing guitar there's two little short wires that just go clip clip and that way you don't, you don't have that latency um that bluetooth gives you very interesting now just on a, a very sort of basic level here chris um what about straps does it does it interfere with the strap button or, or the strap itself can i mean can you stand at up and actually play it with the amp attached. Yes, you can. So we just gave you a second strap button. So we take the first one when we attach on to the guitar, and then we give you a second one on the outside of the jam stack for your strap. So I've got videos of me kind of like walking around, you know, our apartment building, just, you know, outside as people like come up to me kind of thing. So yeah, that was obviously really important for it to truly be portable, right? And of course, 
I've got videos up on the site which shows that happening, but just for people listening in case they're thinking, sure. oh, surely it's too good to be true. But you can see all <laughs> this in the amazing videos that, that Chris and his team have actually created. What was the biggest challenge in all of this then, Chris? We've had we've had some a number of big challenges at different phases in this journey. Um, I guess in, when you talk to most startups, it's always money. <laughs> it can, yeah. um, at different phases, um, I luckily got a industrial design firm to really believe in the project, and I couldn't afford to pay them full price right off the bat. But they, we said, look, if we can convince uh, you know a video person and a crowdfunding manager that this is going to be big, um, then maybe you know we you know I'll give you I'll cover your cost right now, and then on the on the flip side, if the ca- campaign goes well, they can get some money in the back end. So that. Structuring that was key. Um, and boy, did the actual campaign go well. <laughs> yes. Yeah, no, exactly. Um, thrilled thrilled with that. I think in total, we've, yeah, we've got like almost 1,000 pre-orders now, or more, actually more than 1,000 pre-orders in total, um, which is huge. How much does the jam stack cost? So we're for pre-orders because you have to wait. We're doing it uh, 148 US, which works out to just under 200 bucks Canadian. Um, and uh, but when it hits market, it'll be it'll be more than that, probably um, closer to 250. Um, and, and but you'll be able to get it in a few days once we're at that point. No, so I'm, I'm going to be uh, one of the biggest stores in Scotland. Is a, a place called Guitar Guitar, and their tentacles go all over the place. I'll be talking to the store, one of the main store managers, about life in a as a guitarist in a music shop. Uh, will you be getting distribution into uh, stores or is it all going to be, you know, are you going to hold all the distribution and all the rest of it? Great question. So we're kind of going along all paths right now and then going to end up on the one that we, uh, that is the most attractive. Distribution is tough. I mean, they take, you know, half half your profit, generally speaking, um, and it can and it makes things move a lot slower, but it also has some huge upside too. Um, Long and McQuaid is our big music store here in Canada. They've got like 77 locations and I have a letter of interest from Jeff Long, which is which is awesome. I've also talked to uh, Diardio, which is a huge distributor here. And I think they do other, other countries as well. Um, I think we're really going to try and see what we can do online. Um, you can just, you can offer, you know, great customer service and fast shipping and it, and keep all that margin to uh, to really move forward with development and it's just way less risk. Like I've seen so many horror stories with people developing products where they get a big order and because you're you know you're new, they don't they kind of put you in the back of the shelf and then their sales aren't super stellar because you know it's a new product and it takes time for people to kind of learn who you are and then they're kind of like they look at the numbers and they go ah you know you're not really selling so here uh, you have to buy all your stuff back and then now you're just like you know you're bankrupt so we're not sure um, we'll we'll see i think i think once we have the poll that sounded very cheery but i don't think you're going to have that problem chris because there's just so I mean, let's face it guitarists love gear and this isn't just a great piece of gear it makes sense um but also um in the UK, there's that Dragon's Den. Now, am I right in thinking there's a spin-off Dragon's Den in Canada and you're on it? Is that correct? So, yeah, I'm I was... just about this whole letter of intent or interest because they always shred them for that on the show, don't they? <laughs> Let's yeah, see the letter. It, it, it dep- yes, that's true. I mean, it depends on the content. So, I, I, I don't know if you know this. I was on Dragon's Den uh, a couple of weeks ago. It hasn't aired yet, but I filmed it. Uh, I'm not allowed to talk about how it went. But it was a great experience. That's all I'll say. Um, but they, I, I did mention. I mean, they were talking about you know distribution. I said, you know, they all want to see the factory units. I've had a lot of conversations, and I have a letter of intent, and that was well, that was fine to them. I think it it wasn't. I wasn't leaning my whole pitch on it. I just said, you know, we can sell online if we want to. Um, but the the retailers are interested. Um, they just want to see um, the factory made units, which I didn't have yet. You know, in a sense, Chris. And I'm not saying that, I mean, I don't know how that, that show went, and I'm not going to ask you how it went, but the fact of the matter is just being on the telly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, totally. Just the, the sheer exposure. I'm really excited for when it airs. They don't, they only tell you like 48 hours ahead of time. But um, yeah, when it airs, I think we will see a big bump 
and um and yeah publicity and people going to our site and hopefully that we're primed and ready to uh to ship them out by then is this going to create a busker revolution yeah, probably i mean i thought <laughs> some people say like oh great now every you know college campus is going to have electric guitar players you know sitting down at the park doing you know riffs all the time yeah uh who i i think um it might it might there'll be a lot of the it, busking will just become something that is so fluid and so quick and easy um like with anything that becomes more convenient you'll probably see more of it um hopefully it's good and enjoyable so uh, you are are you an engineer is, is your background in engineering i yeah i, I did I didn't um, finish with an engineering degree. Long story short, I ended, I ended up going the physics route and into teaching, but I did two years of robotics engineering at McMaster and then have a physics degree there. And then I also have a teaching degree. Um, so, I, yeah, I've been teaching science and math for the last uh, six years. Amazing. That is very impressive, Chris. And one thing that I would say is um, speaker technology it seems to be getting better and better. Um, getting a good sound out of such, such a small device, is that really challenging or are things moving along so fast now that it's maybe not the challenge it used to be? Yeah, great point. So it's essentially all these component manufacturers are just pushing the limits of uh, the physics there and it's getting yeah, it's getting better and better and better and you're seeing, you're seeing a lot of people jump into the Bluetooth um, market and uh, there is, I mean, you can put a speaker in a like a million dollar testing chamber and tune it, you know, to perfection. But really, if you use like the, you know, fantastic premium drivers, uh, we worked backwards from the weight. We were like, okay, how heavy can this be? And then we said, okay, what's the most premium drivers that we can possibly get at that weight uh, with the battery? You know, did a little bit of math there. And then that's how we kind of sourced our components, you know. And there's some principles like, you know, you have to seal it. You need a baffle can help reproduce um those low end frequencies um the case and everything does kind of factor into it but a lot of uh, a lot of even major speaker companies what they do in their audio testing is they just kind of pair okay we'll use this circuit and this driver in this case how does it sound ah, okay maybe let's just, let's swap out uh increase the volume a teeny bit is that better yep all right done and you know you can get an extra five percent if you you know put years and years of development and that's what some companies do but you can get a really great sounding bluetooth speaker by just choosing, by just knowing the general principles and assembling it almost like modular <laughs> bits of Lego, you know what I mean? And and when you were talking about weight there, Chris, I noticed that it's, how heavy is it? It's not heavy, is it? No, 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 it's it's less, it's about 920 grams, which is less than the difference between a Les Paul and a Fender Stratocaster, which I like to tell people. So, I mean, if you put a Fender Stratocaster on a strap and... Uh, and you feel that, and you put a jam stack. Now it's the same weight as the Les Paul was, and uh, it's perfectly balanced, so that you know you can lift your hands up in the air, and your guitar doesn't move. Um, so you don't, yeah, you le you legitimately don't notice that it's there. Now the great thing about jam stack is that it fits onto the back of a massive range of guitars, but not all guitars. Am I am I correct in saying that, Chris? There are a few. So here are the stipulations. I think we should have this on our FAQ on our website. But so there are so a flying V, for example, um, it won't mount to a flying V because there's I no hate flat flying Vs. I've got a student's got a flying V and it's rubbish. It's, you just can't balance it. I, <laughs> I don't. Yeah, you sitting down playing a flying V is the yeah. most awkward thing in the world. So that's one thing. Um, your guitar needs to be thinner than six centimeters, which is pretty much every single guitar other than acoustic. So we can't have the form factor that we have and still have this spring come out for an acoustic. I mean, we're working on an adapter because apparently that's a huge request. Actually, I didn't anticipate so many acoustic guitar players wanting, you know, reverb delay and loops and stuff. But it's been actually that's the number one question I get is, can I use it with my acoustic? I know but the answer is yes. Yeah. Uh, yes, yes. Um, so that's right. That's right. So it needs the jam stack needs a flat surface. It needs to be thinner than six centimeters. It needs to have a strap button. Um, and there's one other th uh, thing. So there's a few of these hollow body guitars that have this really massive hinge at the top, and that can be a problem too. Now, other than that, though, it'll basically fit on everything else. Um, but again, if you still want to use it as an amp, and one of your guitars is a flying V. Or, or an acoustic, you can just set it down on a table and use a bit of a longer cable 
and it's still an ultra ultra portable amp that you know you can use your smartphone with but if you want that acoustic level portability you need yeah i need to have that flat surface there but we're, i mean i'm working on trying for those small cases to try and uh to try and alleviate that number one is the acoustic mount that we're working on so so um obviously people should come over to the guitar music institute and look up jam stack and you'll see the pictures you'll see the videos and all the rest of it but uh it looks reasonably big to me at the moment, Chris. Will it be getting smaller? What are the future plans? Yes. Um, well, so we went ultra premium. We wanted to, like the loudest, largest amp that we could get at the weight so that you could really jam with this thing. Now, there is, I think, demand for an amp that's maybe, you know, less than 100 bucks. That's teeny tiny and you still have all the same functionality, but... You're not going to get the same quality of sound, but it's really just for just for practicing. Nothing else. You just want the cheapest practice little thing just for you to hear, and it's a hundred bucks, and you know that's kind of it. Um, not sure if we're going to go down that route. There's a lot of things to think about, um, but there's definitely lots of uh, we have lots of ideas for for iterating and um, you know other products, other instruments um, that we want to get into down the line. We're going to see the, what the real demand is and see how that affects, you know, our brand and our perception of our brand and all those things. But it's most certainly an option. We're just focusing on, I'm just focusing on getting this one made at the moment. But. Absolutely. Um, when is it going to be hitting people's sweaty palms? Yeah. So um, we are really hoping um, that uh, early fall, um, maybe even as early as the end of August, um, that we'll start shipping. Um, with manufacturing is really tough and then there's always things that come at you in terms of sourcing components um that are hard to predict like i've heard a lot of horror stories about and you know something just reaches its end of the life and then you have to go searching for something else and there's delays but anyway that's that's really what we're hoping for um and right now yeah we're on we're on track i'm probably going to china next month or actually maybe at the end of this month to visit the factory which i'm looking forward to yeah how's your Um, chinese chris not not very good, but luckily I have um, we've hired some some contractors that are going to help us with oversight and stuff who do have good Chinese. So, so, so I've got a, a bit of mixed, uh, I'll be absolutely honest, a little bit of mixed feelings about this because if you think about it, the greatest jazz guitarist or one of the greatest ever was Wes Montgomery. And Wes Montgomery got his sound, but he actually just used his thumb, not a pick or a plectrum. And the reason he did that was he was upsetting the neighbours with a noise. Jamstack does away with that. We won't be getting another Wes anytime soon. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, like a lot of guitar players, they, they just pick up their guitar. I mean, I, I would just pick up my electric and just play it because it was too much of a performance to get all the crap ready and it just wasn't worth it, you know, when I didn't have... If I have 45 minutes, I'm not going to spend 15 of those getting everything set up and then putting it all back. And yeah, and the sound thing too, it's like even if you have a jam space set up, I mean, if you're in an apartment or you're you're in a townhouse or you're not in a fully detached area, you probably can't turn it up to the part where it really starts to sound good. Um, So having tiny little drivers that are full range means that you can get a nice crispy tone at a volume that doesn't pass through walls. And it honestly sounds better than a Marshall stack at the same volume because it's because you need to have that 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 uh, speaker really moving back and forth for it to sound right. Does it have a headphone out? Yeah, no, it does. Yeah, a headphone out just in case you know you're playing and then you know someone says, okay, really you got to be quiet and you just plug your headphones in real quick. And also we're excited for schools to use this too. Imagine you know there's a lot of guitar programs where there you there are those like 30 kids with acoustics and classical because it's just not practical to have 30 kids playing the electric guitar. But if you could have them all in headphones and then, hey, Johnny, demonstrate what you just did, pull the headphone jack out, show the class, great, okay. I think this is going to have a massive impact for for schools in particular, Chris, because, you know, with budgets being squeezed across the board, this is just a wonderful way of people discreetly practicing or even with the headphone jack, as you say, 10, 10 kids all practicing at the same time. It is absolutely fantastic idea. Oh, thank you very much. In a, in a way, it's almost like, why did no one think of this before? Are you, <laughs> did, did, did you feel that? Get, did you keep thinking, yeah. this has to be out? I was like, I was like, yeah, 
and a lot of actually everyone that I've met was like, hold on, let me like they were like, this is amazing. Too good to be true. Let me I want to Google search for a few days because it doesn't you know, I can't believe you that this is really not the case. Um, and I get that the dragons asked me that question. And a few people have, have asked me and the, the best answer that I can come up with is uh, two things had to happen. Number one is portable speaker technology needed to get to the point that it's gotten to. So that's only been five, seven, even seven years ago, I had a portable Bluetooth speaker that was just not that great. Um, they've gotten so much better in the last couple of years. So that's number one. So there's been a window, but that's a window that has been around. Uh, of course, portable uh, smartphones, um, but they've been around, they've been, they've been having great software for even longer than that. So again, we've had about a seven year window for this to happen, but you've got to look at what are the entities that are going to make this thing real. So you got to look at Marshall and Fender and, and those guys that are in the game and their focus is simply not on ergonomics, convenience, convenience or user experience really whatsoever. Um, there's a few, ex- actually there's a few examples where they finally, I think trying to make things a little bit easier for people, but in general, their marketing and st- structure is very like eclectic traditional like re-releasing amps that were made you know 60 years ago because hendrix used them and and that's totally for performing that's great i mean these amps are they're fantastic but they just it's not where their head is at they're not thinking about what opportunity is there for some a really more compelling uh different kind of experience um i don't know if that's going to change i don't know if they're going to you know become a competitor or not well exactly that i mean i take it you have got a patent on certain aspects of this Yes, we are patent pen. So we've we've submitted uh, the patent um, for three aspects of it, and we have to wait about twelve months to, to before we hear back on whether we're granted those protections or not. And you're taking um, it to China. And then, uh, yeah, <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? Yeah, I know, and that's really risky. Obviously, um, for there's like. I've heard nightmares of um, the third shift. So they do one shift in the day, one shift in the night, and then another shift where they, you know, rebrand your product and send it somewhere else. Yeah, I got a lot of things. There's, you know, I'm not out of the woods yet. You know, you must be so ecstatic. And I, I'm thrilled that this is going so exceedingly well on so many fronts, but there's a lot of scariness and challenges and risks still to, to, to come. Well, Chris, for what it's worth, I think it will be a massive success. And I'm sure having spoken to you and, uh, just learned all about what about you and 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 what you're doing. I'm I'm absolutely. If anyone's got a good shot at it, you have. Finally, what is your hopes for say in a couple of years time? I know it's hard to project. Where would you like to be though, in, in say two years? Yeah. Okay. So I would like to turn Jamstack into a company where we're the name in usable, er, you know, ergonomic, premium, portable amplification for instruments across the board. Um, and you know, with different adapters and, and other things and, and maybe even getting into software, because I think there's a lot of opportunities that haven't been taken in software that I'd like to get into. Um, I picture, I see us iterating kind of like, you know, GoPro has where they're, they're still focused on their product. Um, and they're doing, you know, really good. Sa- I mean, they're struggling a bit now, but, um, just having, you know, re- being hyper-focused and, um, and really every, gu- you know, every guitar player understanding what it is like understanding the value and some people when they see a video they immediately they get it instantaneously and they're like i need that whereas other people they really need to see a buddy have one so i want i would love in a few years for everyone to everyone to at least get it whether they want one or not and you know you know to be doing fifty thousand units a year or more would be fantastic well we we would like to get behind you in any way possible is there any chance whatsoever and you sending a, a unit over to Scotland for us to review? 100%. Yeah, we have a list of people who are, who are waiting for a review, and we would be more than happy to add you to that, totally. And we'll get you one as soon as they're ready. Absolutely fantastic. Well, Chris, thanks for taking the time to, to speak with me. It's, uh, as I say, a fascinating thing. It's not often I look at something and go, that is special. But as far as uh, this project goes... Uh, and Jamstack, there's no doubt that it's... I, I can't see how you can't lose, but I don't want to get too mm. ahead of it because we, we know what the, the world's like and the right. competition is the ultimately the biggest thing. Okay, mm-hmm. well, thanks for listening to this podcast with Chris Prendergast uh, on Jamstack. If you come over to the Guitar Music Institute, you'll find a lot of videos, a lot more information, and indeed you'll be able to go onto the Indiegogo site 
which you can find in other areas as well, of course, and contribute to this. Chris, thanks ever so much for taking the time to speak to us. Thanks for having me. It was, it was a lot of fun. Cheers. From me, Jed Brocky, and from Chris Prendgast. Until the next time, bye for now. Bye for now.